Let me ask you this though. You mentioned the Bryce Harper versus Mike Trout comparison. Who has the single highest home run season between the two of them? I would give Harper the edge at home runs. I would too. I think Harper has like 35, okay, if he's healthy all year. I mean, obviously I'm not saying just this year. I'm just saying over the course of their career, who is going to have like that one monster homer season? Is oh, it gonna oh, be oh, who has the, the, the high of career high? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would probably be Harper. I mean, Trout at 240 now has a case. Assuming he stays in, uh, you know, Anaheim the rest of his career, it's a little bit harder to hit True. home runs. But and although Washington's not exactly isn't it neutral, lost. it's a fairly neutral park. Right. Yeah, but, but Anaheim's really homer unfriendly. Yeah. Um, so you know, but who knows how many teams they'll play mm -hmm. on? You know, um, and so that's just I would probably say Harper. And I think when you, you talk, you know, look at the scouting, Harper scouts as an elite power guy. You know, a guy that may you know hit 45, 50 homers one day. And Trout is more of a 30 homer guy. Maybe right. not even initially he was a 20 homer guy. And now we realize he's a 30 homer guy. But back to the initial thing, I, I want to set up a little framework, Jeff, like to, to, to analyze like a breakout like Trout's, you know, or and what Encarnacion or Ari Dickey or whomever. And, and, and this is the, the framework I like to use, and I do this for football teams too. There's a capacity axis, right? The, a mm -hmm. guy has a certain baseline, and then he can fluctuate around that baseline. He pay, plays his 90th percent game or season or his 20th percent game. But his skill set's the same. And we mm -hmm. see this year for year, we say, well, the guy had a really bad ba luck with bad MIP or strand rate for a pitcher. But he didn't really change his skill set. His walk and strikeout ratios were the same. His velocity right. was the same. And then we consider that a fluctuation around, you know, around a baseline. That's capacity. Did he play to his capacity? Did he play beneath his capacity? And then there's identity, where suddenly a guy who was a six strikeout per nine inning guy becomes a nine strikeout per nine inning guy. Or Mike Trout, who was maybe a 15 to 20 homer guy, hits 30 home runs and just, you know, hits three. In five months, too, by the way. <laughs> right, in five months. And, and, you know, with no experience facing mm -hmm. these pitchers, um, his first go around. Um, and then we say maybe this the identity of this guy is now different than we thought. I believe in that, but I think it can be dangerous too. Remember, we said the same thing about Joe Maurer and his power. Right. And everybody, all the naysayers were actually right on that one. Well, he moved the target field the next he year. He moved the target field. He's hitting a lot more ground balls again right. too. Right. He, he stopped lofting. That one. Maybe it's because he moved the target field. Right. But the point being is, you know, it's just not there. And I, I, I can't fathom betting on that any, ever right. again. So there's that. Mauer, Jacoby Ellsbury, right? But we don't know because he was a little hurt. But he certainly yeah. didn't seem like he was going to. So there, there's, and you know, Ellsbury, we haven't seen a full season, so right. yeah. But but I guess I'll say that. So so how do we decide? I mean, this is the key question, right? Everyone just says regression, like it's just this automatic thing, and I don't mm -hmm. think that's good analysis. I think good analysis is, okay, when someone has an outlier season for a 21 year old, probably in as a general matter, regression is the most likely thing that happens. How much does he regress? How much has he moved his baseline? Has he changed his identity? And how much was he kind of lucky and he's going to just regress it and have bad luck? And there's a couple tools I think we have to look at that. One is, you know, the player's history, his age, mm -hmm. historically what players do, you know, at certain ages. Two, um, I, I think there's the magnitude of the growth, the magnitude of the change. And, and I'll give you an example. If I flip a coin 10 times, right, and I get, you know, let's say 20 times, and I get like, you know, 14 heads, 15 heads, that's pretty unlikely, right? I mean, I'm probably going to get 10, 11, 12, 13 maybe, mm -hmm. but I get 14, 15, that's pretty unlikely. You're not, you know, are, is the coin a weighted coin? Are we going to change what we think of the identity of the coin? Or are we going to say, ah, it was just a lucky thing. It's going to regress to its normal amount of coin flips, right? You, so you have to re investigate the coin. Well, or, but, but let's say, the, uh, let's do, say another example. And I flip the coin, I get 20 heads in a row. Mm -hmm. Now do we still have to like weigh the coin and see how it works? Or, or do we have a very strong case to say, you know what? This coin is, the identity of this coin is not what we thought. It's weighted. Because the chances and of getting 20 heads in a row are one in a million. Exactly. And then the thing is, you have to figure out what sample size is significant. Um, and you have to, is it even possible to get a significant sample size? I, you know, and a lot of times when we talk about this, you know, is it 200 at-bats enough? Certainly not. Right. Is 600 at-bats enough? Probably not. Is three seasons enough? Probably. But maybe. We don't know for sure. That's, that's part I, of it. I think 600 at-bats is enough to say something if the magnitude, I mean, the year that he had was so good, missing mm -hmm. three weeks of the season, right? And to me, he's a different person than he was last year. Is he the same guy that's going to have the same stats as last year? I probably regress him a little bit. Okay. But in my view, the baseline has moved significantly from what we thought he was as a 20-year-old who didn't do well in the Arizona Pro League, who didn't do well in his cup of coffee when he got called up. This is a different player now. Yeah, this is not prospect out, Mike Trout. And you can totally throw out the Arizona Fall League because he was hurt and he was sick and right. it was at the end of a long right. year. So whatever. That's, that's more right. garbage in than anything else. Right. There's a third component, and that's the physical side of things. What has Player X done to change his game? What did Jose Bautista do to change his swing? He worked with Dwayne Murphy. He changed his swing. He changed his approach. 
you know, does Jacoby Ellsbury swing with that same swing path that he swung in in, in 2011? Does he, does he have the same swing path that he had in 20, 2009? Right. You know, you have to know the physical side of things. And that sometimes is harder to gauge. It's harder to be able to get that information. You need scouts, you need pitch FX, you need all these tools that are we're still growing in this business. And there's always that, that whole segment of, I don't know. And I think we always push to say, we need an answer to this, we need an answer to this. Sometimes we're just making it up. I mean, I think at some point you just, it's like, this is my best educated guess. Other than that, I don't know.